morning, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to our first novena. And we're going to begin in song with St. Anne's hymn. brothers and sisters, to the first day of our 113th novena to get St. Anne. So this is certainly going to be a novena to be remembered, a novena in the midst of the pandemic. But all the more important, we do need to bring this uh, needs to the Lord, and we ask the Lord then to hear us as we pray for our world, as we pray for the world that is struggling amidst this pandemic and in our state and our counties as the uh, numbers rise in infection, we want to pray for our world all the more. So let us begin then with, with the Pilgrim's Prayer to Good Saint Anne. Oh, Good Saint Anne, you are a woman of incredible faith. In your life, you have always trusted in God and received the strength that you needed. So I come before you today to ask you for your intercession. When I am afraid, help me to trust in the Lord. He invites me to fear not, but to have faith in the face of tribulation. He is my hope in time of trial. Dear Grandmother St. Anne, you remind me that all things are possible with God. So I place myself in your arms and commend to your loving care my family members, loved ones, and all those I care about. May God's grace help me conquer my fears and grow in my faith every day. Amen. So as we typically do, we begin with the Chaplet of St. Anne. We pray in this first set of prayers. We do it in honor of Jesus, and we pray that the risen Lord may welcome to himself the thousands who have died from this coronavirus and all our beloved deceased, that he may welcome into his loving hands and comfort those who mourn. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners and of the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Good Saint Anne. Pray for us. Our second set of prayers we do it in honor of Mary, and we ask Mother Mary to care in a special way for the those in the front lines caring for the sick, so for our doctors and nurses, those who do research, those who do essential services for us, those who whose lives may be at risk because they're caring for those who are sick. So we pray for their health and well-being, as well as for their families. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good Saint Anne. Pray for us. Lastly, we pray in honor of Saint Anne, asking our grandmother, the grandmother of Jesus, to watch over all our families, that the Lord may keep us all safe from this pandemic that this pandemic may be contained and we may find a cure quickly. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be without end. Amen. Good Saint Anne. Pray for us. The Litany of Saint Anne. For our daily bread. Saint Anne, pray for us. For comfortable shelter. Saint Anne, pray for us. For joyous companionship. Saint Anne, pray for us. In our temptations, Amen. pray for us. In our troubles, Amen. pray for us. In our sufferings, Amen. pray for us. In our good deeds, Amen. pray for us. In our weaknesses, Amen. pray for us. In the hours of danger, Amen. pray for us. In the hour of death, Amen. pray for us. For our families, Amen. pray for us. For our friends, Amen. pray for us. For our enemies, Amen. pray for us. For our church, Amen. pray for us. For those in need, Amen. pray for us. For those who have no one to pray for them, Amen. pray for us. We pray then for the sick. Good Saint Anne. Your grandson, Jesus, accepted suffering to share with us the virtue of patience in human illness. May your kind intercession offer healing for our sick brothers and sisters, comfort for all who suffer, courage for all who are afraid, hope for all who are afflicted, and trust that they have been chosen to be saints and are joined to Jesus in the suffering for the salvation of the world. Amen. We bring our petitions then to Good Saint Anne. We remember Pope Francis, our Archbishop Salvatore, myself and the priests who serve in this parish, and all church leaders faced with the challenges of this pandemic. God, help us to creatively imagine how to pastor our congregants and love our flock. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and infected, God, heal and help, sustain bodies and spirits, contain the spread of infection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our vulnerable populations, God, protect our grandparents and all elderly and those suffering from chronic disease. Provide for the poor, especially the uninsured. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young and the strong, God give them the necessary caution to keep them from unwittingly spreading this disease. Inspire them to help. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local, state, and federal governments, God help our elected officials as they allocate the necessary resources for combating this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For frontline health care workers, we thank you for their vocational call to serve us. Keep them safe and healthy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those who have fallen ill to COVID-19, may God grant them eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I invite you to take a moment of silence to offer your own personal intentions. And so for all of our intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. In this first day, we do the daily offering. Uh, together we pray the church in communion. 
a sure support in time of trial. We pray. Let us pray for those who are sick as a result of this coronavirus epidemic, for the doctors, the nurses, the volunteers who help so much, the relatives, the elderly in rest homes, and the detainees who are locked up. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We, um, oh, it looks like we have one more prayer. The prayer for world safety on the last page. Let us pray for the world then. God, our creator, creator of the world, almighty and merciful, out of love for us, you sent your son into the world as the doctor of souls and bodies. Look upon your children who, in this difficult time of confusion and dismay, in many parts of the world, turn to you seeking strength, salvation, and relief. Deliver us from illness and fear. Heal our sick. Comfort our families. Give wisdom to our rulers, energy and reward to our doctors, nurses, and volunteers, and eternal life to the dead. Do not abandon us in the moment of trial, but deliver us from all evil. We ask this of you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. We continue with Mass then, and Bishop Walsh is our presider. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Camillus de Lillis, patron of those who minister to the sick. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins with sincere sorrow, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who adorned the priest St. Camillus with the singular grace of charity towards the sick, pour out upon us by his merits a spirit of love for you, so that serving you in our neighbor, we may at the hour of our death pass safely over to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Mika. Woe to those who plan iniquity and work out evil on their couches. In the morning light they accomplish it when it lies within their power. They covet fields and seize them, houses, and they take them. They cheat an owner of his house, a man of his inheritance, 
Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am planning against this race an evil, from which you shall not withdraw your necks, nor shall you walk with head high, for it will be a time of evil. On that day a sat satire shall be sung over you, and there shall be a plaintive chant. Our ruin is complete. Our fields are portioned out among our captors. The fields of my people are measured out, and no one can get them back. Thus you shall have no one to mark out boundaries by lot in the assembly of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. Why, O Lord, do you stand aloof? Why hide in times of distress? Proudly the wicked harass the afflicted, who are caught in the devices the wicked have contrived. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. For the wicked man glories in his greed, and the covetous blasphemes sets the Lord at nought. The wicked man boasts, he will not avenge it. There is no God, sums up his thoughts. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. His mouth is full of cursing, guile, and deceit. Under his tongue are mischief and iniquity. He lurks in ambush near the villages. In hiding, he murders the innocent. His eyes spy upon the unfortunate. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. You do see, for you behold misery and sorrow, taking them in your hands. On you the unfortunate man depends, of the fatherless you are the helper. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. The Pharisees went out and took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. When Jesus realized this, he withdrew from that place. Many people followed him, and he cured them all. But he warned them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through Isaiah the prophet. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom I delight, I shall place my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not contend or cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he will not quench, until he brings justice to victory, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. In his name, the Gentiles will hope. In his name, the Gentiles will hope. This, these words uh, from the prophet Isaiah uh, echoes the theme that we begin this novena with. This, the theme of this novena is Strong in the face of tribulation. Strong in the face of tribulation. It comes from Pope Francis' book at the beginning of the pandemic. And so in the book, he uh, divided it into three sections. Prayer as a section, how we can find uh, strength in this sheltering in place, but also reflections from his homilies. So the theme for today is the church in communion, 
a sure support in time of trial. Think about it. The church in communion, when we are in communion with the church, when we are in communion with one another and with the Lord, we will find support in time of trial. Pope Francis emphasizes the importance of being in communion during adversity, which reminds me of the apostles uh, after Jesus' death and crucifixion. So we know that right after his death and crucifixion, you can imagine the disciples, they were all uh, disheartened because this whom they had walked with for three years, this Lord that they saw was the Messiah, now has been taken away and killed. And so they were at a loss. They were, um, their faith was shattered. But what did they do? To their credit, they continued to gather. They went back to the upper room. When with Mother Mary, together, they gathered and they continued to pray. And so the Lord appeared to them. The Lord appeared to them and renewed their faith and hope. Who was absent? Thomas. Doubting Thomas. He was absent, and in his absence, he did not experience the risen Lord. So then the importance of being in community, the importance even when we are struggling with doubt, even when we don't understand, to remain together with Mother Mary and pray together. But maybe there are obstacles for us to coming together in faith. Perhaps uh, Pope Francis spoke of shame. You know, maybe it's the shame of our sins that keeps us away from the Lord or from the community of faith. But he says, you know, there's an, uh, shame is an important part of our faith. Shame helps us to be truly sorry for our sins. We can't have true um, reconciliation with God if we don't take our sins seriously. And so shame is then that aspect of it to help us to see and have true sorrow for our sins. But then, so Pope Francis, he actually encouraged us to pray for the grace of shame, sorrow for our sins, true sorrow that leads to shame. But he says, don't stop there. When you feel sorrow, when you feel ashamed, don't hide from the Lord like Adam and Eve, but instead, talk to our Heavenly Father. He is our Heavenly Father. We can approach Him. We can talk to Him about everything, and He understands us. So go to our Father. Have a good heart-to-heart -heart talk with him. And so then we will then experience like uh, the father of the prodigal son who welcomed his son back unconditionally. Isn't that your experience? You know, we may feel ashamed going to confession time and time again over the same sin. But what great relief we experience when we hear the words of absolution, that the Lord in his mercy forgives us. But maybe perhaps it's not so much that we feel ashamed that separates us from the church community. Maybe it's something that the church has done that they should be ashamed of and we should be ashamed of. And that maybe that's the reason why we don't want to go back to church because the church has done horrible things in 2000 years of history. And in this, these last decades, we've heard news of such shameful actions by priests, by bishops. And so there is a lot that we also need to be ashamed of our church. But like any family, you know, any family where people love one another, there will be friction, there'll be faults, there'll be failures. But what do we do as a family? We have a good heart-to-heart -heart talk. We forgive each other. 
we move on, we help one another up again so that we can continue to be in relationship. We can help each other move along and grow and find mercy and reconciliation. And I, that's one thing I'm very grateful of my uh, community here at St. Anne's. You know, my brother priest, the sister, and uh, we live together. You know, there'll be friction, but we're always encouraging. We're always supportive. We always forgive one another. And we have harmony. We have peace. We enjoy each other's company. And so the same with um, our, our larger faith community. You know, we'll do things, people have done things that have said the wrong things, maybe they had a bad day, or for whatever reason. Maybe it was a priest, maybe it was a fellow parishioner, maybe it was a sister who said harsh and unkind things to us or done things to us. But in order for us to live in community, you know, like in our families, we have to forgive each other so that we can continue. Lastly, the Pope reminds us that God made himself a gift to us. You know, why do we gather? What's the reason of our being? It's because God is in our midst. God made himself a gift to us. And we heard that in today's gospel. God the Father said, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen. You know, look at the Lord Jesus. We see him in the nativity scene, the baby Jesus. We see him in the cross that was willing to suffer and die for us. Why? So that we can be united with one another and so that we can be united with the Father. So remember the gift that God has given us, his son, and he will help us through any tribulation. Jesus came to be that rock for our lives, to be that support and help and encouragement. So three things. Doubting Thomas reminds us the importance of being in community, even in adversity. And Pope Francis reminds us to not let shame keep us apart, but talk to the Lord who will forgive us. And lastly, Pope Francis also reminds us that God has made himself a gift to us so that we can find in him strength in our adversity. So truly, the church in communion, in communion with one another, in communion with the Lord, truly then, we will find support in time of trial. Amen? Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless us, God, forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my many sins. 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and upon the Lord his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may follow the example of blessed Camillus de Lillis, be confirmed in love for you and of our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you now and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. In the mouth of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and granting for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our oh, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. This mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us to receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, who by the will of the Father, work and Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your teachings and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Greater love has than this no man has that he lays, lays down his life for his friends. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of Blessed Saint Camillus de Lillis, who honored you with tireless devotion and by suppressing, sur, surpassing charity was of, of service to your people through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is then to go forth to live the gospel. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And now as we conclude our Mass, we will have a blessing with the relic of Good St. Anne. The, the intercession of Good St. Anne, Mother of Mary and Grandmother of Jesus, may God bless you, fill you with joy, guide you in your pilgrimage of faith, and strengthen you in sorrow. And we ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good St. Anne, pray, pray for us. us.